everybody else, I was looking forward to the 2020 Formula One season, but since that got postponed for some reason, I started watching old races and realized something. A lot of these companies sponsoring these cars don't exist anymore. Shady Money has been a part of Formula One's DNA for a long time, and with 490 million people watching, there's no question why shady companies would want to get their name on the side of a race car. What the heck do these companies do? Are they real? And where do they get their money? In this episode, we're going to look at some of the sketchiest, literally unbelievable companies that have a stake in Formula One racing. And don't worry, there is a Nigerian prince involved with one of them. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Hey guys, one more thing. We have a new sticker pack available for pre-order. It is the oh, oh, sticker pack available on donut.media. It's available for pre-order. Five stickers and it's Mo Power Baby in sticker form. I'll just show you. There you go. Those are the stickers. You got Mo Power Baby on board. That's probably my personal favorite. You got a white one, a black one. This one's very cool. Uh, and then this looks kind of like the more Moroso font, which I think is pretty awesome. Mo Power sticker pack, $12, five stickers. Pretty awesome. More fun than you could ever imagine. The Mo Power sticker pack on the donut store. Go check it out. The cost of racing is insane. Formula One teams require hundreds of millions of dollars in order to compete every season. The amount of funding a team can secure directly correlates to how much a team wins. That's just how F1 works. It's the way most sports work, frankly. More money, better engines, better drivers, Papa John's. Jeff Baseball. The governing body of F1, the FIA, or Fédération Internationale des Automotives, very stringently regulates car technology to maintain as much of an even playing field on the track as possible. But they historically haven't done much to balance the money side out. Kind of like how small market teams in America don't get as big a budget as the big market teams like the Yankees versus the Orioles or the Lakers versus the Kings. Formula One will have a budget cap for the first time starting in 2021, but historically speaking, there's always been a big gap in the budgets between the highest earning teams and the lowest. Case in point, Mercedes Patronus spent the most in 2019 with $484 million, which is almost three times as much as the Williams team spent in the same time frame. This was less than their previous year's budget of $150 million because Williams lost their title sponsor, Martini and Rossi, a company that produces vermouth, a sweet liquor made from wine. Side note, their stuff is actually pretty cheap. I thought for sure that a company sponsoring an F1 team would have some really luxurious stuff, but it's like 8.50 a bottle. Anyway, Williams still has to compete with Mercedes despite the fact that they're working with $350 million less than Mercedes. Suffice to say, a sponsor dropping out can cripple or even doom teams, which is why sometimes F1 teams end up with less than reputable backers. One recent example that Formula One fans will remember is the rich energy fiasco from last year. The only American-owned team in Formula One right now is Haas, and they fell victim to the shadiest sponsorship situation of 2019. Rich Energy, a slick new energy drink with antlers for a logo, became the title sponsor of the Haas team. It turned out that another F1 team, the Force India team, dismissed Rich Energy for lacking substance before they went with Canadian billionaire Lawrence Stroll's money. Then Williams was actually about to ink a deal with Rich Energy, but they didn't show up. Supposedly, William Story, Rich Energy's CEO and roadie for Imagine Dragons, set up a meeting with Williams, but never made it to said meeting. Then a few days passed, and the news comes out that he signed with Haas. That should have been a red flag for Haas, but there's actually a third red flag, the fact that there was no product. At a certain point in the 2019 season, people on F1 forums and Reddit realized that they had never seen a can of rich energy in real life. When grilled about the legitimacy of his company, Story further confused everybody when he told Motorsport.com that when people say that rich energy doesn't exist, that's like, quote, saying men never walked on the moon or that Elvis is still alive. Dude, there are easier ways of telling people that you have a product and your company is a real company, okay? There just are. Then someone dug up financial statements from the company that showed their bank account had 581 British pounds or $770 total. Maybe the weirdest part of this story happened on July 10th of 2019 when Story went rogue and tweeted out, quote, today, Rich Energy terminated our contract with Haas F1 for poor performance. 
I guess you can't get fired if you quit. This was news not only to Haas, but everyone at Rich Energy. They tried to force Story out of the company, calling his actions the result of a quote, rogue individual. It was a whole thing. Rich Energy never held up their side of the deal, probably because they had $700 in their account, and Haas got screwed in the end, having to finish out the season with one less sponsor. Rich Energy was then taken to court over their antler logo when they were forced to pay white bikes $30,000 in damage, uh, which they never got. William Story was eventually pushed out of the company and they rebranded as Lightning Volt. But this actually wasn't the first energy drink debacle in Formula One. In the 1999 season, a mysterious prince from Nigeria and a fake energy drink led to an F1 team going bankrupt. You can't make this up. The 53rd season of Formula One started in 1999. Mika Hakkinen was defending his world championship title with the McLaren team, Michael Schumacher was recovering from a broken leg, and the Arrows team was trying to figure out their finances. Enter Prince Malik Adu Ibrahim. Prince Malik offered the Arrows $125 million to be a sponsor. For a team that was as strapped for cash as Arrows, 125 mil could completely turn their luck around. So team manager Tom Walkinshaw agreed to let the Prince bankroll Arrows for the 99 season. The livery that year was shared with Repsol, so the car was painted in half Repsol orange and the rear half painted black with a T minus logo. It's a very unique look, I'll give him that. Prince Malik could always be seen in the paddock with cameras surrounding him. He ate up the attention and didn't miss a chance to promote his brand T minus. What's T minus, you ask? Well, it was supposed to be an energy drink. It was supposed to be a motorcycle brand. It was supposed to be a lot of things, but it never ended up being much of anything at all. The plan was to debut the company in Formula One, then sell rebranded products like energy drinks, motorcycles, and uh, bicycles under the T-minus badge. They even planned on rebranding Lamborghinis under the T-minus logo. Hey, you wanna see my T-minus Lamborghini? Uh, no. No. <laughs> no. T minus was actually the third energy drink that sponsored Arrow in four years. The others being Hype Energy Drink and Power Horse, which we somehow don't own the copyright to. Although T minus did manufacture some energy drinks, they didn't make any money. And by the end of the 99 season, Prince Malik was nowhere to be found. When he was called upon to buy the rest of his shares, no one could get in touch with him, and his shares ended up being bought by investment firm Morgan Grenfeld, who sued Arrows in return. The Arrows team had fallen prey to a real-life Nigerian print scheme, and unfortunately, the loss of this funding and other woes led to the team shutting down in 2002. So what happened to Prince Malik? Well, he popped up again a few years later to sponsor a NASCAR driver, but more on that later. Hey, if you're liking this video so far, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell so you never miss a video when they drop, which is every day of the week. It's crazy. One of the T-minus logos, this mirrored one, reminded me of a more recent mirrored logo, the Mission Winnow on Ferrari's current car. I actually think it looks pretty sick, but what the heck is Mission Winnow? Winnowing is the process of removing the straw from the grain during the milling process. Mission Winnow has nothing to do with flour mills. When you go to their website, there isn't much information. Not any useful information anyway. It's full of vague business terms and it almost feels like a parody of a corporation. Just listen to this, quote, innovating and investing in an open dialogue, bringing people and businesses closer together, creating a mutually beneficial ecosystem. Their Twitter sounds like if a bot was programmed to jam as many corporate buzzwords into one sentence as possible. A little further digging and I found out that Mission Winnow is pretty much a shell company for Philip Morris International or PMI, you know, the people that own Marlboro. Cigarettes. Philip Morris has been in Formula One for decades, so why is it Mission Winnow and not Marlboro? In 2006, the FIA banned tobacco sponsorships in Formula One. But since Mission Winnow is a new initiative that's not pushing tobacco products or any products at all, they're allowed to sponsor a car despite being owned by a tobacco company. Technically speaking, it's a CSR, or Corporate Social Responsibility. In layman's terms, Mission Winnow encompasses activities that are meant to improve the public standing of a corporation by portraying it as a responsible member of society. Basically, it's PR. This wasn't the first time that Philip Morris got SSX tricky with it, though. F1 fans might remember the barcode logo on the Ferrari car from a decade ago. 
That was Marlboro's attempt at being subversive, but watchdog groups quickly caught on. At a standstill, it seemed like nothing more than vertical lines, but at high speed, the barcode resembled the Marlboro Chevron. The Mission Winner logo is actually just the Marlboro Chevron on its side. It's the same dimensions, same shapes, it's everything. It's a way for Marlboro to stay in Formula One without it actually being involved. Guys, it's a loophole. A loophole that the World Health Organization is looking to close very soon. Last year at the Australian Grand Prix, Ferrari was forced to remove the Mission Winnow logo from their wing because of Australia's strict tobacco advertising laws. It wasn't just Australia either. Scuderia Ferrari was forced to remove Mission Winnow advertising for 11 of the 21 races of 2019. It looks like their advertising strategy spun out. It might be a sign of what's to come though. Ferrari isn't the only team with a tobacco sponsor. McLaren is sponsored by A Better Tomorrow, which is owned by British American Tobacco. McLaren also had to remove their advertising ahead of the Australian Grand Prix as well. It's sleazy, but in a way, it's pretty brilliant what Philip Morris is doing with Mission Winnow. It's guerrilla advertising. It gets people talking. I mean, hell, I'm making a video about it right now. They won clearly. Philip Morris puts this huge, intriguing logo on their car that has nothing to do with cigarettes. People find out about it, they get up in arms about it, and Philip Morris gets free advertising because humans are inherently curious. I mean, again, I'm talking about it right now. It's like when Radiohead put out In Rainbows and then years later someone realized that it fit exactly with OK Computer and everything was based off zeros and ones. It's exactly like that. During the Austrian Grand Prix of 2018, viewers were puzzled by the iTime banners and advertisements. iTime was the title sponsor of the event, but no one had ever heard of this company before. At this conference, the CEO, Magdalena Krumova, describes the all-in-one iTime app as world-changing, social, and up-to-date. Because that's what sells me on an app, if it's up-to-date. So what the hell is iTime then? Well. It was a messaging app, much like WhatsApp, but really iTime was an MLM or multi-level marketing scheme, also known as a pyramid scheme. And apparently they're still active and what they actually do is still a mystery. Kromova actually started other pyramid schemes under names Lioness and My World, which also sponsored F1 for a bit. And Lioness was actually banned from doing business in Norway. If you can't do business in Norway, I don't wanna buy your product. There's no way I'm gonna buy your stuff. If there's one type of person that Formula One attracts, it's old guys with a lot of money. That's probably why one of the sponsors of the 2018 Singapore Grand Prix was Sugarbook, a dating app that matched younger sugar babies with older rich men. Although they never sponsored a car, Sugarbook was set to co-sponsor a party at a bar hosted by Williams title sponsor Martini. That party would have been Pretty gross had it not been canceled, probably because it would have been a PR nightmare for Martini and probably Williams as well. Look, I'm just a schmuck, but this is as good a time as any to bring up ethics in F1. For a billion dollar multinational corporation, Formula One gets away with a lot of less than perfect behavior. It exists in this weird dichotomy, okay? On one hand, it's a world-class sport second in popularity only to football, but on the other end you have really sleazy sponsorships, cutthroat behavior, and sometimes a disregard for human rights. And unfortunately it's been like that for a long, long time. This might be a little heavy and a little controversial, but when the governing body of a sport is sometimes morally bankrupt, a shady sponsor doesn't seem like the end of the world, and that's probably why Formula One attracts so many of them. Anytime you have an organization worth billions, there's gonna be some shadiness if you dig deep enough. So whatever happened to Prince Malik after he ghosted the Arrows team in 1999? Well, he popped up again in the US in 2005, this time to sponsor NASCAR Bush Series driver Robert Richardson Jr. Allegedly, Prince Malik stole $750,000 from Richardson's dad, and even though he was acquitted, Prince Malik was jailed in Texas for perjuring himself. These days he's back in Nigeria and nowhere near the racing scene. Keep that hustle up, dude. <laughs> no, no, don't do don't 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 steal money. Look, I love Formula One. I'm still gonna follow it if it comes back this season. Hopefully it will. I just think when you have so much money involved in one thing and the world's attention, there's ultimately gonna be some shady sponsors. Hopefully I'm not on any Formula One blacklist. Hopefully I could get invited to something soon. <laughs> Follow Donut on Instagram and Twitter at Donut Media. Follow me at Nolan J. Sykes. Subscribe to Donut Media. We put out a video every day, which is crazy. Uh, check out these videos about Formula One. Our up to speed is finally, you can watch the up to speed on Formula One. Be kind. Don't steal money. See you next time.